Meet Aubrey Graham. See, Aubrey had a problem. Everyone hated him. And it's so much more people than you can imagine. I'm gonna need y'all to lock in. When The weekend was first coming up, Drake said, sign on my label. The weekend said, nah. Drake said, okay, can you help me with some songs? Though, weekend said, sure, why not? Drake said, can you help me with some more songs? That's some more song. Matter of fact, can you just give me half your album? The weekend said, I don't really have a choice because I'm a new artist, but I'm not gonna sign your label. Drake said, that's okay, we're still friends. Then Drake started dating his ex-girlfriend, Bella Hadid. Me, ASAP Rocky. Drake took him on his first tour ever, but Drake noticed something. I saw Rocky kept hanging out with this girl named Rihanna, and Drake really liked that girl named Rihanna. Fast forward years later, ASAP Rocky gets married to Rihanna and they have kids. Drake didn't like that very much. So Drake starts saying mean things about him and his wife, so he gets mad. Meet Ricky. He thought Drake was a little weird because of the whole Meek Mill situation and for the fact that Drake called for a cease and desist on a French Montana song behind the scenes. But Rick said, we're still friends. Rick Roth then features on Metro Boomin's new album, does not say anything about Drake, but Drake took it some type of way. So so Drake invites Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend to his concert. Rick Ross doesn't like that very much, so he gets upset. Which brings us to Metro Boomin himself, who the man who kind of started this whole thing. See, Metro didn't really like Drake because Drake has always been weird in the industry. He thought it was a little strange that Drake was still getting awards for an album that nobody listened to, and Metro was not getting any awards for his album that everyone listened to. Drake said, screw you. Metro says, screw you back. Future didn't have no big problems with Drake, but he's very close with Metro Boomin, and he's been in the industry a long time. He knows. So he probably thought, eh, I see where Metro's coming from, but it wasn't that deep for him. Drake didn't see it that way. Future, you chose your side. I don't care if you're talking about me or not on the album. Screw you too. Pusha Pusha ain't really had no problem with Drake like that, but I need you to pay attention. Drake had a problem with Pusha T because Pusha T had a problem with Drake's mentor, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne had a problem with Pusha T because Pusha T had a problem with Lil Wayne's mentor, Birdman. Pusha T had a problem with Birdman because Birdman didn't pay Pharrell money for a beat. And Pharrell and Pusha T go way back to the days they weren't famous. Another trend you'll see in all these beefs is Drake inserting himself in a position he just doesn't need to be in. Like Megan Thee Stallion, she was having a problem with somebody named Jay Prince, Tory Lanez. Drake said, ooh, let me hop in. So Drake makes a song about her saying some crazy things. It gets wicked. He then gets mad at John Moran, starts to be over a girl. He then starts beefing with Common because Common dated Serena Williams and Drake likes Serena Williams. He then starts beefing with Asa. Did I mention him? He then starts beefing with Ye. It's always been a love-hate thing between them. But then when the Pusha thing happened, Pusha T is signed to Kanye's label. They were close, so Kanye chose Pusha T's side. But then Drake starts getting close to Kim Kardashian. Kanye thought that was weird, so he says, screw you, Drake. He's also had a beef with Tyga, Joe Budden, Jenny Aiko, Tinashe, Charles Gambino, I believe. A million people. But most of all, the people have always been a little annoyed with Drake. Fun fact, Drake as well as Kid Cudi and Kanye were the first people to make semi-nerdy cool in the rap game. Those three were in the forefront of rap is changing, but everyone tolerated Kanye and Kid West, but Drake took things to a whole nother level. Let's just be frank, Drake is half white, but that's not the problem. The problem is to many people, Drake puts on a persona of blackness. If you're not black, that's not up for discussion. Listen closely, J. Cole is half white, but he acts like J. Cole, accepted. Lil Yachty is from the suburbs. Acts like Lil Yachty, accepted. So Drake being half white and being from the suburbs really has nothing to do with it. It's the fact that he pretends to be someone he's not, that kind of annoys some people. It's the fact that many artists claim that he takes their songs. XXXTentacion is one of these people. This is why his whole crew OVO hates them because they make music too. But apparently he takes all of his songs and doesn't let them release any music. It's the Ghostwriter claim. It's the fact that he's always messaging young women. It's the random petty stuff he does online. Now you may be asking yourself, has all this been going on for 15 years? Why would people still mess with Drake like that. Well, that's because he was making good music. The moment he stopped making very good music, the bubble that he'd been building for so many years was ready to pop. And then there's Kendrick Lamar. See, Drake took Kendrick on his first tour, the same one that he took Aesop Rocky on. But then Kendrick comes out with a song called Control. It's a Big Sean song as well. And Kendrick is throwing shots at everybody in the industry, but it's friendly competition. He said, I got love for you all. Everybody he named was cool with it. In fact, they said, if you got named in that Kendrick verse, that means you're a good rapper. Everyone except for Drake. You see, Drake took it the hardest. He took it very personal. Drake went to Kendrick, said, Kendrick, Kendrick, uh huh? Drake said, why would you say you got love for me, but then say you want to take the rap crown from me? I would like an apology. Kendrick said, okay, I'm sorry that you took it the hardest. In fact, I hate you. And I've always hated you. You know why? Because you're weird. 
I don't like your morals. I never wanted to say anything. But it turns out I just found out that I'm a little weird as well. So, eh, let's talk about it. Drake said, fine, we finna see who the craziest. Kendrick said, you don't wanna do that. Everyone in the industry try to tell Drake, you don't wanna do that. Drake did it. Well, that's why we're here now. And then he said that you're rapping like you always trying to free the slaves. What do you mean by that? Huh? What, what do you mean by that? This is what Kendrick was talking about. He's not a part of our culture. One, rapping started as a way to empower us. Two, the way he said you're rapping like you always trying to free the slaves exclusively says he does not see himself like us. Fraudulent slip. That's a fraudulent slip if I ever heard one. It really puts in perspective that line where Kendrick said he makes music to electrify and you make music to pacify. Because that was the point of hip hop before certain people got involved. <laughs> I really thought Meet Kendrick Lamar. He's from a city called Compton. This is their city hall as seen in the video. Wait, I thought he was from Los Angeles. Well, Compton is part of the greater Los Angeles area, so he still says he's from Los Angeles, which is why this clown appears in Kendrick Lamar's video. He's a Los Angeles legend named Tommy the Clown who keeps kids off the streets through dance. He also invented a popular dance called crumping. Kinda. This is his dance crew. They're wearing red, white, and blue to symbolize America versus Canada, but also to symbolize these two groups of individuals that didn't like each other for a very long time. Hey, you know who else was part of this group? Kendrick Lamar. Just kidding. Kinda. Listen closely. Don't make the same mistake as Drake. Rapper YG, as Drake said, grew up as a full member of the Red Group. But see, Kendrick Lamar grew up as an affiliate of the Red Group, meaning that he grew up on a certain block as to where all his friends love that color red and his family members love that color red. Meaning that the red people will always have Kendrick's back. So when Drake tried to put them against each other, it showed how clueless he was about Los Angeles and street culture, really. So YG had to correct him by showing up in all of Kendrick Lamar's concerts and videos. Like this guy, DJ Mustard, who made the beat for Not Like Us. He's also from Compton, but get back on track. We're talking about Kendrick. Just kidding. We're talking about Steve Lacey, also from Compton. That's why he performed at Kendrick's concert. Tyler the Creator's from a neighborhood like right next to Compton. That's why he performed. Russell Westbrook's from the same neighborhood as Tyler the Creator, which which is why he hopped on stage and LeBron James didn't because LeBron James understood this is a Los Angeles thing. Also, why DeMar DeRozan hopped on stage? A for sure Hall of Famer basketball player who grew up in Compton, played for a little bit in Toronto, Canada, where Drake's from, but came back home to Compton. Which brings us to Dave Free. I don't know if this is the same reference, but it looks good. Also Compton native, Kendrick Lamar's childhood friend, Drake tried to put him against each other, but they're like, nah, we good. Which is also why he brought his family, saying, nah, we good. They just don't like the spotlight. Which is also why she's wearing this shirt, because Drake accused Kendrick of doing something to her. If you don't know what this shirt is called, look it up in the comments. Drake essentially lied about everything, but what you need to understand is Drake and Kendrick are from two very different places. Drake also said, hey, your label probably hates you. Kendrick said, no, they don't. They're right here. But why Drake? said that is because usually in the music industry if you leave your label something bad probably happened it was a fair guess but what Kendrick is trying to say and what has been trying to say it's not always about the fame it's not always about the money this whole thing is not even about Drake it's about hip-hop which is the black community especially your community which is why Tyler and them came back home to perform with them which is, is that Roddy Rich? which is why old hip-hop videos would always bring the neighborhood out always drove around the city always got food at that neighborhood spot that everyone loved. This is what Pusha T was trying to tell you guys with this picture and this is why Princess can't join the Powerpuff Girls. You can't buy your way in, you can't fight with all the members, and you can't just say you're a Powerpuff Girl. There's a little more to it. And this is why your favorite rapper's favorite rapper is Kendrick Lamar because although he could have spent his whole career making hits, he decided to make music to uplift his community. But they still bangers though. My favorite reference in this entire Drake versus Kendrick beef situation actually just happened in the Not Like Us music video. That owl in the cage, the cage bird, um, was the nastiest read. A lot of people know Dr. Angelo wrote a poem called I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, but not everybody has ever heard the poem with the same name. <clears throat> a free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. 
The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on a distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze, and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees. And a fat worm waiting on a dawn bright lawn, and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on a distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. He's not like us. <laughs> Personally, I would stop rapping. <laughs> I would just give up the game.